Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Snake Doc here, and we're gonna do another pistol unboxing today. And I don't know if you'll know what this is just by looking at this generic case that they ship in. Yeah, there's really nothing to decipher what this is on this case. So, here we are. Grand Power ships with three magazines. So we have here the Grand Power. This is the Q100. You can see it here. Slides covered in oil. There we go. Grand Power Q100. This is the Gen 2. There's a couple things different on the Gen 2. We got this flat face trigger here. Um, one of the complaints on the Gen 1 was the trigger had no discernible break and uh, it's kind of a mushy feeling trigger. Well, this definitely solved that. This is an outstanding trigger. Um, the other thing you'll notice is the rear sight is different. The rear sight is no longer that half moon shape. Um, and it is actually a, a functional, you could actually use that to manipulate the slide. Um, still three dot sights. Uh, I don't believe they're luminescent. They might be, but I don't think so. Um, it uses a, a, it's a striker fired pistol. And uh, if the striker is cocked, you can see the striker indicator right there. Go ahead and take this magazine out and let's take a look at the magazines real quick. So these are uh, a nice high polished blue finish and you can see that they have a notch cut right here and they also have a notch cut right here. This is the notch that they're actually using to lock into the pistol because the gun is fully ambidextrous. Not reversible, but fully ambidextrous. So there's a look at the base plate. I don't remember, I don't think the Gen 1's shipped with three mags, but this one is shipping with three mags. Um, I think they're a 15 round mag, but there's an extended post on the follower that if you uh, do some trimming on that, you might be able to be able to get another round or so in there. Sorry, my dogs are going crazy right here playing and they're making a bunch of noise. What does that say? PSTD? PSTD. Interesting. P standard? I don't know. Um, back onto the pistol anyhow. Comes with four back straps. Um, I actually like this one the best. I've try, I tried all four of them out. And this one um, is approximately the same as the medium with the exception of this uh, back strap extends and continues on this angle right here. It just fills your hand a little bit better. And it, sorry, dogs, enough. Um, so let's see, which one was the medium? I think this is the medium. So the difference would be this one, see how the difference, like this one would go straight down where this one continues to angle backwards. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is the small and, uh, it's very narrow. Um, obviously it's not something that works well for my hand size. And then this is a large. And what I didn't like about the large was the, um, this right here um, made the trigger reach uh, a little bit uncomfortable for me. Um, so it wasn't, my finger was not falling exactly where I would want it to. So I went with uh, this one on there. And these aren't held in by a pin or anything. You just got to take a, a screwdriver or a bullet or something and just pry this and then it pops off. Um, like I was talking about, it's fully ambidextrous. So both sides of the gun, we have slide stop, slide release, as well as our magazine release is functioning from both sides. And if this was the hammer fired one, this would be where your safety would be. And those, those are uh, ambidextrous on those as well. So we have a single slot right here for a light. Um, it's a 
standard style rail. It's like a 1913 shape there. So all your stuff should work on there. Um, assuming that it will line up with the slot. There you can see we have the uh, crust right here that's milled into the slide. These are imported by Global Ordnance out of Sarasota, Florida. We know that these are made in Slovakia. It says right there, made in Slovakia. Um, very, very well finished. Um, very nice and smooth. Uh, action on it is really nice. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that, how that trigger functions. Um, so here you found a pretty distinct wall and then a little press more and there's your brake. Slide would cycle, here's your reset. Right there. And you're right at the wall. So very short. and light. I would bet that trigger is well under five pounds. Um, definitely under five pounds. Here you can see that would point at your safety selector. This right here is like a milled machined piece of steel. It's slim to the gun. It doesn't really affect anything. It doesn't get in the way. You can barely feel it, but it's really well beveled. Um, let's show that the, the slide will go home um, using the, that control on either side. So if you're on this side, if you're a lefty, it will go home. Uh, rotating barrel, that's what Grand Powers are known for. These are melanited now, or nitrided. Uh, Gen 1s were like a stainless or a chrome finish, polished stainless, one or the other. And here you can see some nice beveling on the slide. Let's take a look at the nose of the gun and see how that looks. So there you can see. Um, there is also one called the Q1. And the Q1 um, would stop right here even to the end of the dust cover. So it is uh, like a... 3.86 inch barrel, I think, and I believe this one's a 4.3 inch barrel. Um, <clears throat> the advantages of, <clears throat> excuse me, the advantages of a uh, rotating barrel is that you don't have, the barrel stays in the same axis the entire time. It just twists. So if you think about like a SIG or a Glock, when you pull the slide back, you can see your barrel tilts up like this because your ejection port, <clears throat> all your chamber and everything drops down on that link and then tilts like this. So this one just stays in the same plane, which also allows for a lower bore axis in the fact that you're feeding similar to a Beretta 92 where it's feeding right off the magazine straight into the barrel mouth so there you can see how they integrate a little bit of a feed ramp into the steel chassis that is the gun so this does have a chassis style system on it similar to your p250 or your p320 sig um, your iwi masada your steyr um, basically it's it's that style where your serialized part is the chassis the bummer on this is they also serialize the frame. So your frame does technically qualify as the gun um, still, even though it has a removable fire control unit. So what that means is you would have to use an FFL or something if you were going to either part your gun out or send it for... Um, you know, getting Cerakote or something like that. You couldn't just, like, there's people that Cerakote that might not have an FFL and you can just send them your slide. But if this, like, in, if you had a P320 chassis or a grip frame, you could send that because there's no serial number on it. Unfortunately, like I show, this one has it on both. So, what else comes in the box? So, it comes with this foam case. Um, 
I wish it had a separate cutout so that that one mag wasn't just like resting up here, but it is what it is. Gun comes in this extremely greasy um, bubble wrap. Uh, I have not cleaned this or done anything. Um, it comes with a, one of the chintzy style locks. It comes with some extra front sights. Um, this looks like there's two extra, so three total front sights and an Allen wrench. Front sights polymer on this. Um, it comes with this cleaning rod with a little bit of a tip protector on there. And your manual. And there's your parts breakdown. Um, let's see what it says about warranty. Two years from the date of purchase. Hmm, I'm curious to see. Uh, I've heard that parts can kind of be hard to get, so you might need to go through um, reaching out to Grand Power through social media, or you could um, reach out to the importer and maybe they have some parts on hand. So that would be one of the downfalls to this. But overall, I mean, it's really probably, I would guess it would be in the running for one of the best, most well thought out striker fired guns that are available. Um, because you have four different grip options that actually change the grip. Um, it's fully ambidextrous, so you don't have to swap anything. And it's not in the way where you're going to be hitting these inadvertently and dropping things. It has a flat face trigger on it. It's a really easy takedown. I'll do a short video on that. I won't do it in this video because YouTube doesn't like that anymore. Um, it has, you know, nice sight arrangement on it. Um, it has this ability for one-handed manipulations. Um, and it looks good. It's a really good looking gun. Um, let me pause the video. I'll go get my scale real quick. Actually, it's right here. I don't even have to pause. Forgot I had it here from doing my uh, Ruger video. So let's bring that into frame here. And we'll switch it to ounces. So a little bit heavier than what you would expect, 26.3, whoa, 26 point, wow, that's weird. 26.38 ounces, hopping back and forth. I don't know why it's fluctuating like that. And then we can put an empty mag in there. So almost 30 ounces unloaded. Now, like I said, they do have a uh, subcompact version. I believe that one's called the Q1S. And then they have the Q1, which is the same grip frame as this, just with the shorter slide. So um, I don't intend to carry this. So I opted for the longest barrel possible because I do plan on doing some IDPA matches with this. And uh, sight radius is definitely an advantage when you're shooting targets. So, um, I need to clean it. I need to get all of this packing grease and everything off of here. Um, the other thing that I will say is this right here is really slippery. And when I had my um, a P1, I put some GT5000 grip tape in there, and I still might do that. Um, traction Grips makes grips for these, so you could get traction grips for this as well. Um, you have uh, horizontal serrations on the front, but they're very shallow. Um, but the grip is extremely comfortable. I would just say that texture, you know, could be improved. Um, it has jimping right here on the front of the trigger guard if you like shooting with a hook grip. Nice high undercut right here. Um, nice high beaver tail. And um, when you get a nice shooting grip on there, um, even though... This is using the hammer-fired gun's chassis. Um, it's actually a very low bore axis, and uh, it's much lower than like your P320. So, I guess we'll wrap up there. We're at almost the 15-minute mark, and I'm sure you've gathered enough from uh, watching this. These are really a great bargain right now. Um, I got this from uh, a 
retailer out of Texas and it was right around 400 bucks shipped. So for what you get for this, um, there's really nothing in its class, um, especially when you figure out how awesome the rotating barrel is. So um, I guess we'll wrap up right there. Look for my shorts video if you want to see how to do a takedown on this. It's not hard. Um, so I'll make a shorts video for that if you want to check the channel for that. So as always, thank you guys for watching and always shoot safe.